Hi everyone, I'm Jennifer Ferguson with Artistic Painting Studio and today I'm going to show you how I'm going to transform this wooden box into a beautiful serving tray. So let's get started. So the first thing we're going to do with our project is go ahead and paint it. Now I'm going to be using our product here that's called Bondego and it's by a company called Perfetto and it's just a black paint and primer all in one. And I'm just gonna pour some out. I like using foam plates. They just seem to be easy for me uh, and I reuse them all the time. So you can use whatever kind of brush you prefer. I love using my uh, artist brushes, okay? So I'm just gonna pull this up so you can see. For this project, I definitely want a black base because we're gonna be using one of my foil foils um, on part of this tray, as well as we're gonna come in and do some epoxy. So whatever brush you're comfortable with, if you like foam brushes, you could probably even get out a foam roller. Um, I've just been doing stuff for so long this way. I just take the time to use my artist brush. Um, I like that they put the paint on smooth and even and maybe it takes me a little bit longer, but I like how I can get such a smooth application from uh, working with these brushes. So if you see that I'm brushing the base from side to side, that's the grain of the wood. That way I'm not causing um, a lot of extra uh, brush strokes going in a different direction. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and paint this whole thing. I'm gonna paint the inside, the sides, I'm gonna paint the bottom. I'm going to do 100% coverage and I'm going to check after my first coat and determine if I have opaque coverage. If I don't, I might have to put on a second coat. So I'm going to finish this up and when all the painting is done, we'll come back and get to the fun part. Okay, our tray is completely base coated and like I said, I did all, all sides, so inside, outside. And now we're ready for our next layer. So we're gonna be working with foils and the first layer that we need to apply when doing a foil finish is our foil adhesive. And this is under our brand, Artsy Bill Embellishments. And I've already poured some out onto a foam plate. I like to take it out of the um, jar always because if you're gonna be brushing it, it's nice to go ahead and spray just a little bit of water. Okay, and all I'm doing is using our mist bottle, okay? It just sprays a little bit of water, but mixing this in, it just helps it to flow a little bit better when you are doing a brush application. Now, I want to uh, apply this to the bottom only, okay? So I'm gonna use my brush so that I can get right up to that edge and um, try to stay off the sides. You could also tape um, if that would be easier for you. I figured if I ended up getting any of the foil adhesive um, onto the sides, I could easily go and just paint black over it if I needed to. Um, so using something similar to the type of artist brush I'm working with is definitely gonna help in this process or tape it off first. Um, you want to try to apply this as smooth as possible. So I'm going to come back and make sure that my brush strokes um, are even and kind of just smoothed out because foils don't always hide all your imperfections. And this product does not self level. So you want to make sure that you um, smooth it out the best you can. Uh, and I'd say get it on first, okay? Just get it on there and then come back and smooth smooth out your brush strokes. So I'm going to apply the foil adhesive to the entire bottom of the tray. And then we're also gonna go ahead and do the outside edge. Here, I'm not gonna do the top. I don't wanna do the inside edge because I want the black to be uh, the contrast on this project so that we have a contrast between our foils. Okay, so I'm going to finish this up and um, we need to allow our foil adhesive to dry. I want to say no less than an hour. Um, it needs to dry to what is referred to as a firm tack. The longer it dries, 
the harder the tack is. It's still really, really sticky, but it's what we consider a firm tack. And it is best to allow it to dry at least an hour to get to that state um, to have a more successful application um, of your foils. If you try to transfer too soon, sometimes you just won't get um, the best release of the foils. So I've allowed the um, foil adhesive to dry for a while here, um, probably a couple hours. And so it's now time to grab what is referred to as a metallic foil and do our transfer. So with metallic foils, um, the beautiful side that you're seeing right now that has the floral and all the color is actually the plastic side. And the metallization and the print is really on the back. So first thing I always try to remind everybody is when you're gonna do a foil transfer is make sure you have the shiny, beautiful, pretty side facing up. Now I've cut sheets off already and I'm basically just gonna lay this in here, trying to get it as close to one edge as possible. And then we're just gonna smooth it out with a cloth, Let's see. And I always like to just smooth it out first um, with a soft cloth, I'm using just a paper towel right now. If you get any bubbles, you can always get a hold of this here. Lift the foil back up and what I basically say, burp it, okay? If you have any wrinkles or any bubbles and then just lay it right back down because if there's any part, I gotta keep this up on here because the sides are still sticky. Um, if there's any part of the design that didn't transfer, um, if you put it right back into place, that adhesive is still gonna be in that spot to grab it. Um, so always rub first. I'm gonna burp this side as well. I refer to it as burping, okay? <laughs> Just wanna pull it back, release it, and allow it to go right back into place. And then just rub on the foil. This is really such a cool way to um, do so many things. Now we can use a scrubber brush as well as your toothbrush, okay? Um, when you get into these edges and you gotta get close to that, sometimes your fingernail will work best, um, even to rub the back side of your fingernail across those edges. Toothbrush sometimes is really good about getting into those tight squeezes as well. And then I gotta watch my outside edge here because remember, I've got foil on that as well. But this is a um, plastic bristle brush. It's just a scrub brush for the cleaning, um, from a, like the cleaning department of any store. And I'm just gonna go ahead and scrub back and forth a few times and try to make sure that I have as complete coverage as I possibly can get. So now I'm gonna pull back to reveal better coverage if possible. Um, and I'll say we're pretty good here. This is um, absolutely beautiful transfer. And you can see that my foil is almost completely clear, okay? That now I did get a little bit of my foil adhesive on the edge, which transferred the foil um, to the side a little bit right here. So I'm gonna have to definitely come back and paint over that with black paint, which is no big deal. So now I have cut these strips, okay? Which I knew would make doing the sides easier other than the fact we're on these triangles, okay? <laughs> um, so all you have to do is just put your foil over that edge. And I'm gonna go ahead and set this down on some of my pieces of foil that I've already done because it won't stick to, well, it might stick to it, but it won't get like stuck in it, okay? It won't like get stuck to it like paper would. That way I can get this on a little bit better surface. And just scrub. Now anywhere the wood is um, a little rougher, so the wood's rougher on these ends, it might not transfer as well, or you're gonna have to put the foil back and just scrub a little bit more and it transferred better. So it's personal on how well you, um, how much of a transfer you want. If you want some of that black peeking through, then um, just allow it to peek 
peek through, okay? Don't come back and scrub anymore. On my rough ends, I definitely had to scrub a little bit harder, okay? And the last side to go here. And we almost have this finished. This is going to be so pretty. Okay, so I'm going to cut another strip. So I would say to be safe, if you wanted to do a tray with um, this much coverage, you would probably want to get about two, four, maybe about five feet of foil. Um, I haven't been uh, cutting it as precise as I possibly could have, but I would say probably around five feet of foil I need to be able to get this project done, which makes it pretty inexpensive for what you're getting, okay? <laughs> now, we've even had customers completely cover their walls with our foils like it was wallpaper. It's absolutely beautiful. Look at that transfer, that is awesome. Okay, so now what I'm gonna do is I am gonna come in here and clean up my edges where I got a little bit of the adhesive on the sides. Oh, isn't that beautiful? And then I'm gonna go ahead and we're gonna come back and do an epoxy pour on the base so that we can protect this beautiful foil so it will be a very functional serving tray. So the next thing I wanted to introduce you to is our liquid glass, which is an epoxy product. And um, we are going to mix this together and then do a simple little epoxy pour. And yes, you want a glove up. I'm also going to take off my watch for this. Um, it's sticky. Um, and there's nothing dangerous about it, but it's sticky. And you definitely want to take the time to do things precise, okay? Um, it comes in two parts. I actually have some larger open containers here. And there's a part A and a part B, which is your hardener and your resin, okay? It is advisable to go ahead and pour part B first. It's just thinner and settles to the bottom of the um, container easier, okay? Um, I also have cups for measuring so that I can be very precise about this because you wanna make sure that you are equally pouring this material. So I want two ounces of each and I'm just gonna get down here low and make sure that I am getting as close as I possibly can. Um, one of the main reasons is when you are being precise with your measuring, the product um, will harden, okay? If you get off in your measuring, you could possibly end up with some so soft spots in your epoxy. So it's really important to go ahead and just take the time Make sure that you are measuring equally, and then you get the fun part of mixing this, okay? So this is a small batch, and I'm okay with doing this by hand, but you wanna scrape your sides of your container, you wanna scrape the bottom, and guess what? You get to mix this for like two minutes, okay? Um, it's a pretty good workout, but uh, that's again part of making sure that you have a great pour with your epoxy is that you're taking the time to also stir this well. If you're doing a large batch, then I actually will get the mixer that attaches to my drill and I will use that to mix it because it's going to save my arm a lot. Okay, when you are mixing, um, if you want to just kind of make sure you're stirring for two minutes solid, Set a timer for yourself and that way you don't have to guess. Um, the next thing I'm gonna add is uh, what's called diamond dust, okay? And this is just some really cool stuff that's gonna add a little sparkle. And you saw how little amount I added. So realize that a tiny bit goes a, a long way. And I'm only mixing up four ounces of product. And that is based on the fact that your epoxy, uh, three ounces should cover a square foot so that I know that I'm a little over a full square foot here so I went ahead and mixed an extra ounce of product and now I'm just gonna stir my diamond dust in and once I feel like I've got that mixed in well we're just gonna pour this into the center of the tray now I haven't taped off the sides or anything okay 
and I'm just going to brush it to the edges. So we're going to put that aside and I'm just going to take my brush, okay? And we're just going to brush it all the way up to those edges so that it just sets up there. And the other thing that you want to do when you're working with epoxies is make sure your surface is level. If it's not level, all your epoxy is going to run to whatever side that is, okay? So normally I spread this out with my hand first, but I really want to get my edges and just get this down into the sides. And believe me, it's going to self-level, so it's going to finish making its way to the edges all on its own, but I just want to make sure it's brushed up to there. And then once I get that done, we're going to hit it with a heat gun to make sure all the bubbles rise out. And we'll actually hit it with the heat gun a couple of times. So I'm going to turn this around so that I can see better. Um, but you're going to love working with a two-part epoxy. Um, they are just so much fun to work with. Um, this is just like the simplest of pour, okay? All I'm doing is basically creating one of the most durable, protected coats I can. And you saw that I'm able to go right over my foil. So I didn't have to put down any kind of top coat or protective coat over the foil. I was just able to pour my epoxy directly over it. So that saves you steps. And then you know you're gonna have one of the most durable, uh, protections as you can possibly get. The um, diamond dust I added is just going to create an extra little sparkle which is just going to be um, a little bit of fun to add. I always love if I can put something in there. You can add um, glitter, diamond dust um, are basically the two things. I have put my mica flakes in but you're definitely going to have to do probably multiple blood coats over the top of that because it's going to create way more texture, okay? Okay, so now I'm gonna go ahead and get my hands on this, okay? I think that's part of the fun for me when I'm working with epoxies is I just like to get my hands in here. And I'm just gonna spread this out the rest of the way so that I feel that I've not completely evenly spread it out, but as best as I can. Once I get that done, then I will be um, hitting it with the blow torch, okay? I'm just gonna drip that back in there so all my epoxy is on my surface. And like I said, it's gonna soft level out. Okay, got a brand new roll of paper towels here. I'm just gonna try to wipe my hand off a little bit and so that I don't have to constantly glove up and re-glove. Um, I actually have 91% alcohol inside this spray bottle and I just spray my hands and I can wipe them off so that way I can grab tools as needed. And the next thing that we're going to do is I've just got a blowtorch. Um, this was bought through Home Depot. And all I'm going to do is you want to stay about six to eight inches away from your surface because you don't want to burn your epoxy, okay? So just light your torch. And what that's doing is bringing all the bubbles to the surface so that it clears it out. Okay, so I'm going to let this sit for probably about 10 minutes. I'm going to hit it with a blowtorch again and probably do that twice. Okay, let it sit for 10 minutes, blowtorch it, let it sit for 10 minutes and hit it with a blowtorch and then just let it sit. But make sure wherever you are allowing it to dry and cure that you are completely level. So grab a level and make sure your surface is level. Then we'll come back and do our finishing touches. So now that the epoxy has set up and hopefully you can see that beautiful little sparkle that we put in there called diamond dust. Um, our final touches are to add our top coat and I'm going to go with gloss so that our foils stay shiny and bright and then we're just going to add um, a couple of handles to the top of here and our tray is going to be done. Okay.
love how this tray turned out. Absolutely beautiful addition to anybody's house. Thank you for joining me and we'll see you again.